Mr. Mark, there he is. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, I've lost my laptop to Disney Plus and High School Musical the series. <laughs> it's all right. You told me it's a fair exchange. You know, you had to. They had to give up the room. You got to give up the laptop. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, uh, Anyway, they're having, they're, they're, we, we started watching that the other day, and uh, I actually kind of liked it myself. <laughs> oh, I watch all that stuff with my daughter, all every Disney movie out. I just saw the new Trolls recently. All right. But I'd much rather be outside in my garage in my little man. In the you know, man I don't cave? Really have a man cave. I can't call it a man cave much as a man area. <laughs> well, I'm so happy I get to see you guys, man, because under the circumstances, the closest I'm going to get to you guys for a while. Yeah. Likewise. I know. I can't be believe how different Vegas is right now. That's crazy, right? Oh, never in a million years. Last year, we were over there partying like rock stars. Now it's like really a desert. Was it a year ago? When, 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 what was the date? When that was, was a, that was December, you know what I mean? So, you know, it was like beginning of December. I'm just trying to say like, you know, it was like six months, a couple of months ago, but it just seems like forever ago, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, now, now that this is, this is the sesh. Hey, I'm gonna dab. Happy 420, guys. And you know what? And Vlad, I appreciate something like this, like you said, recording it and posting it tomorrow because yeah. i've been doing these live i did these live things that chloe knows it's got all yeah. day and yeah so 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 what i do is like you know because i always try to do things different than everybody else you know i've been hearing that these zoom lives have been being hacked so we we, we record it and put it out the next day it's great it's great and i don't have to uh you know it's it's different i don't have yeah. to i don't have to worry about and I you gotta to remember and you gotta remember, before we start, I know Chloe knows this, so you can understand, Mark. This isn't Barbara Walters or like super corporate uptight. This is happy monkey, happy hour with Vlad. So it's just kicking it, chilling. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, it's not that kind of party. I will, I will, I will say that I have been dabbing all day. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, so you ready to take over the world, Chloe, so I can get this started? I'm ready. All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have two special guests, two cannabis titans hailing from the West Coast. First off, we have my sister from another mother, Chloe Villano, founder of Cloverleaf University, founder of Cannabis Business Awards, and so much more. Who knows what she has in store? You'll find out today for the future. Then hailing from California, we have my brother from another mother, Mark Wasserman. If you don't know about him, you need to get in tune. He can save you from a lot of things. Co-founder of Prop Brothers at Law and so many other amazing things. And most importantly, you know, major things keeping the industry safe and on, and on track. Thank you very much, brother. So my people, happy for 2020. How are you guys doing? We're, you know, we're really high. We've been uh, doing a couple of these shows, you know, and just uh, hanging out with some amazing people online. I mean, we're all quarantined. So this Zoom, I mean, it's been popping off. We had over, you know, a hundred icons that we, 420 icons. And uh, it's just, it's a whole nother level right now. Well, just like in real life, Chloe and Mark, as you guys know, after all the shows and the conferences are done, the after parties at Happy Monkey. Always has been, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. Oh. Even online. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I, I remember, so back in December when we were on the balcony somewhere yes. in Vegas. Yes. Yes. And I was I was doing dabs and I'm gonna do some more dabs right now. <laughs> Listen, man, it's 420. It's 420, I need, man. I need more. Like I told I you, it's more. It's happy hour with Vlad. It's not Barbara Walters, you know. This is what we do, you know? Right. So guys, I have some very good questions since I have, you know, such 
you know, cannabis royalty here. And I want to know your opinion, guys, you know, how, you know, I believe just, not just the cannabis industry, but society, right? I believe the way that the Bible has BC and AD, it's going to be like pre-COVID and post-COVID. So my question to you guys is, what do you guys see the cannabis industry from pre-COVID to post-COVID and what do you see changing? When I will, I, I will defer to Chloe uh, to the to the nice lady. Uh, ladies, ladies first, ship. chivalry isn't dead, right, Mark? Never, <laughs> not in my house. <laughs> you know, I. Hear that? You know, I, COVID was. Uh, you know, we've had some great days. We've had some rough times. You know, cannabis is in itself in a really amazing place. And then it's also in just a really shitty place, right? Because it's still federally illegal and where we have all these laws that don't make any sense or contradictory state, local, um, different state to state. But what we have seen post COVID is that these businesses are now deemed essential. And medicine is an essential part of life. Not only that, we know that cannabis is safer than alcohol. Well, you just might smoke 30 joints, but you might still get up at 7 a.m. And, and run the next day. We see that there's a lot of athletes that love cannabis and people who need more enriched systems. And so I see this, in, you know, everyone always acts like, I mean, and, and a lot of people are pussies and, and that's fine. <laughs> I get that. That's why I love Chloe. No filter. That's why I love Chloe. That's right. All about it. But we're not in the fucking winning business. We're in the fighting business. Yes. Okay. And sometimes we lose, but we fight. That's what we do in this industry. When people expect us to all of a sudden just be winning all the time or over hitting some speed bumps, you know they're not even really in this industry. This is a whole big fight. This is what it is. So COVID really is not shit to us, except now we're essential. And that is a big deal. Now we ha we are mandatory jobs. Plus, we see these lines around the corner. I mean, people are buying toilet paper, but you know what's like second in demand is their weed. And the weed sales are hot. And so, I mean, with the digital technology, I'm, I'm noticing like we're here, Vlad, on your podcast. You know, Pop Brothers at Law have a huge online, um, you know, a, a fan base where they go on and they communicate with thousands of people. And I think it's teaching us a whole nother level of this industry. And we're only going to get better and stronger. And at the end, we're going to hit even harder because this industry doesn't stop. No, definitely. Thank you for those kind words. That definitely was very informative. How about you, yeah. Mr. Mark? What is your take on the post pre-COVID, post-COVID cannabis industry? Well, so I'll focus more on uh, the culture side, the Im impact, because this, this heavily impacts culture, whether you like it or not or know it or not. And, you know, all the science and all that stuff is, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm staying at home until science says we can gather in, you know, groups of 10,000 people at events where we like to go to. You know what I mean? I mean, I'll, you know, of course, we'll go out. I'm sure it'll come out slower than that. But just the, I haven't passed a joint to my brother. I haven't, I haven't smoked with my own brother for, I, I, I know it, uh, March, it'll be like March 6th. Cause we, we had just come back from a, a cannabis, a cannabis event thrown in our honor out in Denver, Wolfpack Cannabis. Nice. in denver brought us out and that yeah and, and chloe chloe that that got all set up at uh the uh cannabis awards in vegas with uh manny and wolfpack cannabis well, and when we came back hugs <laughs> I, I, I that Clo chloe's the, cl the queen of colorado uh, uh, the queen of everywhere the queen of everywhere right <laughs> Queen of everywhere, but that—that's like the last time I actually passed a joint, not only with my brother, but just with people who were coming to meet us from all over the place and say "shut the fuck up" and shake our hand and take pictures and smoke a joint and do a dab, and that's all. That ain't happening anytime soon, you know. I mean, we 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 can only hope for uh, a sesh of ten people to sit around in a big hall, 
six feet apart, you know? It's crazy how, they, to... how, how these things we used to take for granted that we did on a regular oh. basis. Now we yeah. see it was like, you know what I mean? The most valuable things. And I feel like just in life, aside from the cannabis industry, I'm going to tell you guys my opinion on that, but I'm just going to tell you about life, right? Aside from the cannabis industry. Like, I really believe that. I hope that, you know, I'm always, a, I'm an optimist, always trying to look at the positive, that people realize the things that matter in life are not, like some things that people worried about that they didn't have, like material things and status and all this stuff. Because as we know right now, guys, the only thing that matters is roof over your head, your refrigerator being full, your family and friends, all these other superficial things that people feel inadequate of that, they don't have, they don't even matter now. Yeah. Well, your weed matters too. Because- of course, of course, of course. That That's that's yeah. that's, a, that's an essential part of, I think that that's helping people maintain their mental health during this quarantine or else they might've lost their marbles, Chloe. But I'm just trying to say as far as like, you know what I mean? Like I hope when things get back to normal, people remember this and don't get caught up in the hype about, you know, status and superficial things because when it hits the fan, they don't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're a billionaire or a garbage man, you're stuck in the house and you're running from COVID the same way. Yeah. Hey, hold on, hold on. A garbage man is an essential worker and he's got a job right now. Yeah. So that, that sure. you know, just to go back on your analogy there, that's a garbage worker has a job right now. He's he's not out of work. As he, far he as, ain't out of work. As far as the industry, guys, this is my opinion. I feel that, um, it's going to be, of course, there's pros and cons, right? I believe the cons are going to be that, you know, legislatively, you know, things are going to get backed up a bit because, you know, it's not a priority right now. But I really believe that as far as like cannabis being mainstream and like an essential part of society after this is done, this raises the odds. And I really believe that it's filtered through all the money grabs that were trying to get in the industry just for their 10x, 20x overnight, I believe that they're going to run for the hills because this is not an overnight thing. And I think that it's going to leave the real people that really care about the plant, the people that care about the culture are the ones that are going to come out strong out of this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, I already hear them, some of them talking like, oh, I don't know, cannabis is not working as fast as I thought. Well, you should, you, were, you shouldn't have been in cannabis if you thought it was an overnight get rich quick scheme. You know what I mean? This is a lifestyle. This isn't a hobby. Right. And you know what? You know what? what I think, I think at the at the end of all this coronavirus, if there is an end, I, you know, whatever that is, what, when we can go back to, if we can go back to normal, I, you know, but then it's like, are we ever going to be able to t- pass a joint again? I, uh, I don't know. Right, right now, at this moment, the answer is you no. Know, you just, you know, what? Okay, I'm not, you know. And I've hung out with people. I've had people come to my, my, uh, my law clerk. He's been doing a lot of shit for me, uh, and uh, running around and getting this and doing that. Because we're attorneys are still essential, and we represent cannabis business people who own yes. cannabis business. So we, yes. you know, we're we're working in courts. Courts are mostly closed, but are open for certain things and stuff like that. And, you know, there's still, there's still work to do every day. And, and it's, it's amazing to me that the federal government can still right now sit on its ass while other states in the union are saying this is essential. We're going to keep it federally then, illegal. And that was good. You mentioned it because only some states, because you know, it's crazy how life works. The other day, you know, it was looking like it was starting to be more accepting here. Then out of nowhere, the New York Post posted about a week ago that cannabis is not deemed essential in New York State. Gosh. So it's only some places yeah, where, 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 you know, where it's really being being essential. But it's still... Oh, when did that... Ha- wait, wait, wait. When, when did that happen? That came out about a week ago, or maybe like five days ago, that article. Hmm. Yeah, that's too bad. I mean, the laws there just, we have the East Coast laws as well. And even still your, your systems, you know, your legislation is just so, um, it's so high knit. You have so many high paid firms, people that are involved in that legislative process, very limited license, 
uh, very hard merit-based application processes. They're not really opening it up. Not a lot of patient access. Um, you know, it, it, you, you have to be vertically integrated and with so many different locations. So you have to have millions of dollars to millions like to just well 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 thanks to you guys happy monkey is keeping that fire lit under them to put the pressure game on them because thanks to you know we have so many amazing friends like you guys you know we're always in the face pushing it to the limit you know so sooner or later they're gonna have to crack now guys it's 420 i need to know cheers what are you guys smoking on on a day like today you guys say you've been smoking all day what you been smoking on I have been smoking on nothing but West Coast Cure, All right? So I got my Cure Pods. I had here. Let's see. Or actually, uh, right now I'm dabbing here. This is great. Watch this. I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have family in the business, and uh, you know, gifting and things like that between adults and family members is nice. Uh, let me, wait, I, I'm looking, I, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm looking for the, I'm gonna turn this around. I've been working on, uh, I guess you youngsters would call this a slab. A okay, slab. cause I've been dabbing, I've been dabbing since 4.20 a.m. Pacific. You've been smoking like it's 2099, huh? <laughs> yeah, sir. How about you, Chloe? Hey, where'd I'm, it go? About 6 a.m. Oh, Okay, there. Do you see? Yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. But that, that's what's left. That's what's left. You are a V12 engine, Mr. Mark. You're no joke. Yeah, no, he is no joke. <laughs> E90X and the whole slab. So yeah, I wait, I, hold on. Now. I, I, I... Hey, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> So I need to ask you guys, uh, it's 420. I know you guys have been a part of so many amazing things in, in on this 420 date. Tell us about some of the amazing things that you guys did today and uh, how you felt there was, because this is a different, this is the first virtual 420 in history. What do you guys think? How did you see it different? Chloe, once again, I, I, I will, uh, ladies first. We had this amazing pop brother-in-law here on our amazing podcast. And you know, this was great because, um, you know, I worked with the World of Cannabis Museum in Amsterdam and we worked with the Cannabis Business Awards to launch um, this one time thing. We wanted to give back because we're all stuck in quarantine. We wanted to give back to the industry. And um, we came up with this 420 Icons top 100 list and basically um, you know, we wanted to say who contributed to the culture of cannabis. If we could choose a hundred names of all time, I mean, a lot of them would be dead, this and that, but let's make a list of the top. And I like it because it wasn't the corporate industry, it was the culture. It was, it was. If we didn't I find like that, it made the list. Um, and so we, we went down the line and then, um, you know, we did this live stream and we had, you know, Keith Stroke, we had John Sinclair, for God's sakes. Um, and then we had Bob Snodgrass, we had, um, Rick Cusick, you know, we're looking at- the Oh, that's my brother from another mother right there. Triple OG legend. You know what I mean? And we had all these legends in the beginning of this and, and the conversations and them talking about, you know, 420, 20 years ago and, and when they first started high times and all that. And the conversations were so enlightening. If you missed that part of the broadcast, you know, you definitely want to go and to Cannabis Business Awards and actually see that because the conversation. And then we started slowly going into more of like the celebrities and like the sesh, right? And everybody was kind of smoking. And I mean, it was truly amazing that we brought everybody together and from the comfort of their own home and just this really unique way, Mark and his brother came in along with the team at Cannabis Talk 101. Um, and then Rohan Marley showed up. We had a couple athletes, Landon McNamara, pro surfer, reggae artist out of Hawaii. So all these people all over the world, Cody Button from South Africa, cut off this hundred names. We had Jerome Baker. We made a, a bunch of custom bongs and gave all of those away. And I think that uh, it was a pretty badass 420. I mean, if I must say, hey, listen, I mean, the government's paying us to stay home and smoke fucking weed, you know? <laughs> I think I, I think uh, I think people don't understand that that's why cannabis is recession proof 
It's not so much only because of the planet and all the amazing things it does. It's because of the people and their spirit and the energy that they have that look, even under these circumstances, everybody's able to band together and still keep pushing the, the right. forward. Exactly. <laughs> Mark. I, how about you, Mark? <laughs> no, I just, I, I uh, you know, I, you saw me leaving. I was inside my house. I, I had to, that, uh, my two youngest, my, 10 year old and six year old, my six year old daughter, 10 year old boy were getting going at it. And there was some hitting involved. Oh. So I had to. You had to I play had referee? To, Did she I, beat the ass? No, well, I, I I got the aftermath. I got the after, right? I'm I'm up in, I'm up in the, I'm recording, you know, I'm up in the room. I'm up in our master bedroom that has become my office. Although I'm going to be getting evicted pretty soon, I think, by my wife. <laughs> Give me my room back. So, you know, we're here on Happy Hour with Vlad. So, like I said, man, they ask you all you guys the typical business questions everywhere else. Vlad's not going to do that. Vlad's going to, you know, hit you with some different culture, lifestyle stuff. So I want to know from each of you, tell me each one of your craziest smoking experiences, most memorable. I know you guys have tons. Pick one. All right, so this is this is this is uncut and raw. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, all right, because so any any story like this that I tell comes with the disclaimer that it happened. Oh, disclaimer. <laughs> it, it, it happened at least eight, seven, eighteen years ago. <laughs> Because you know, I, yeah, limitation. I, I know what's going on. I've been I've been married 17 years, so you know any story I, that's happened about, about 17, about 18 years ago or more. I mean, I could go back 30. It depends which story. I you know, I'm an old guy. I could go back 30 years. Whatever. So whatever so, you feel to be interesting to us. Well, and rather than put any kind of time frame on it. I just tell the story, so it doesn't matter when it happened. Right? There you go. <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna heat up my rig for a second, take another dab. Okay, wait. So this was the craziest story revolving what uh, around <laughs> using cannabis? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just little, like I'm yeah, a just like a smoking or uh, hanging out. Exactly, like you know, that's like memorable, okay, great got you. experience. I got, I, that was I, a memorable, great experience for you. No. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm just gonna. I want to. I just want to take a little dab, and then I'm gonna tell you. Tiny, tiny dab. So, okay. <clears throat> so, for me, really, it was. It. it <laughs> I'm looking. Making sure, making sure no the one. The coast is clear. <laughs> no, no, no kids are sticking around. Although they know most about what Daddy did when he was a young single, crazy attorney. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, for me, it was I was I was in a I was in a jacuzzi. Okay. I was I was with three other people. Okay. Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, I mean, I, I guess, I guess uh, you, you said you're not Barbara, Barbara Walters. But no, if you to ask, no, if you, no. If you, but hold, hold Happy on. hour I, with Vlad. I, but I'm, but, but as an, as a person who interviews people, also, I don't mind a little inquiry. I mean, if you wanted to get any more details i'm not opposed i i won't give you what i don't want Listen to give you to but me. un unfilter no filter here didn't you tell me didn't you hear what i said about chloe i said i love chloe no filter this is the happy hour with vlad that's why we do it at 10 p.m this is not uh, you know uh, okay PG 13. bex i'm ready it was oh, three oh. It, it, it was all right it was three it was three women Three women, okay. a jacuzzi, and about 15 joints that they said, if you could smoke all those, 
And then they wanted to take a couple of bong wicks, you know. And they made they wanted to they said they wanted to smoke it together, but really it was me. If I could smoke it all and was still around to have some fun. Joints by yourself? Fifteen joints. Easy. Listen. That's and, where you got that so tolerance from. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, how long do I have to smoke the 15 joints? <clears throat> and they said, you know, I don't know, you know, we're, 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 this is in Vegas, jacuzzi in a hotel room. Like, you know, you know, eight, eight, or, nine, eight or nine hours. I said, oh, okay. And so about, uh, it was just under an hour. I had sucked them all down in just like a bucket and then now we're 15 joints yes <laughs> you are the real mvp stuff. mark you know what you know what i compare it to i don't know if you've ever done this I, in fact i'm sure you've both done this you've been you traveled somewhere you went somewhere you flew somewhere you went somewhere you brought your good shit with you and then you're done and you're coming back and you have it but you're not bringing it back you're not going to get on the plane and come back with anything and so oh shit i have like a bunch of joints you might stuff a bunch and just start I, i've done that many times on trips because i just i don't like flying. i i feel like i got there with it good enough and i brought as much as i thought i would need anyway and so I, i've done that before where i've just i'm gonna finish this because i ain't wasting it so you finished the 15 I, joints. I finished within like an hour, under an hour. That's a record. And I went back into the other area of the room. And they- You're still functional, Mark? What's that? You're still functional after 15 joints? Oh yeah. yeah. I'm still functional now. I have been dabbing since 4.20 a.m. Pacific <laughs> Pacific, uh, uh, stand, you know, no, what's it called now? Pacific, <laughs> Pacific Daylight Time, PD, PDT. It's not PST, it's PDT. Pacific Daylight Time here and just going all day, just going all day. I mean, it's, it's, it's medicine. Keeps me going and, you know, at some point when I'm ready to crash, I'll s smoke, dab or vape or edible. What is good for me to help me crash? Put me out. So what happened you know, after the 15 joints? We didn't we didn't get the rest of the story. You finished the 15 well, joints. What was the reward? So, well, the, the, the reward is this. <laughs> Come on, you can't leave the cliffhanger like that. The, well, no, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I got the, it. Got me. You know, we made a deal. I made a deal with them. I made a contract. And you held up was, your end of the deal. I, I was I was an attorney. I literally made when they told me all this. I, I wrote it on a napkin too. I wrote it on a. On a I wrote it on a napkin. <laughs> I haven't talked about this in so fucking long. Uh, <laughs> That's Vegas, what the happy I was for. You, you, you blame it on Vegas. Like, it's Vegas. So so nonetheless, did I tell you the agreement? What did I? Oh, no, you I, said I don't, that you were with three friends. You stepped, they told you that you couldn't finish the 15 joints by yourself. You said you went in the other room, you did, and now you're back and we're waiting for the rest of the story. Okay, so I didn't tell you that I made an agreement with that. If I finish those 15, then I get, what do I get? And they said, if whatever you want. Oh, that's a broad because statement, Mark. That's what they said to me. <laughs> I'm telling you the story. I'm telling you the story. I'm telling yeah. you the story. What, what, what'd you say, Chloe? And you sucked and you were you sucked him down in one hand. <laughs> oh, I was almost. I was like, well, it, that's what they said. And when I said, when I said, pre like we, you just said, when I pressed them, well, that's what. What does that? You know, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I want. And they said, no. You know what? We could probably imagine what you want. <laughs> I'll never forget that image. And if you finish those 15 joints, we took eight hours, it's like you're going you're gonna to be asleep. You're not going to, you're going to be asleep. So whatever you want, whatever you want. And so I went into this other room and I, I, I was just, I was just smoking. You proved and them wrong. 
<laughs> I finished and then I I went back into that room, glad Chloe, and I did. With three with with three women, whatever I wanted. And I know you both have good imaginations of and course. have probably, and and have probably been with people and have done whatever whatever you've wanted in your head, you know whatever. I just so, know if I would have been able to after 15 joints, man. I I, I set my hat to you, man, because you got the energy to win. Because tough to still be functional after 15 joints in an Glad hour. You're, in in my you're 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 either very special or very very smart. Because I have never, not not I've never told that story on air to anybody. <laughs> That's what the happy hour is about. I told you on the other shows, you guys tell them about all your accolades and all the corporate stories. That's not what the all happy right. hour is for. I'm wrong. I'm now, good. I now, don't mind. Thank you for sharing. Now I'm interested in hearing Chloe's because Chloe's been around the world 15 times, so she smoked with the best of the best. So I want to know what is memorable to Chloe. What adventure? Hello? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. There she goes. So I have had some crazy ass oh, I know. Judge my first cannabis oh. in 2000, Amsterdam. And so many different things with cannabis all in my life, right? But when I went to Spain, and it's funny because I posted that picture today. I had to judge multiple different cups, right? You know, you can smoke in the clubs. Span like Spanibus, right? Spanibus, and but with we did the Turp Tower Invitational. So, okay. I mean, here we had, like, I mean, we had the most amazing shit in the world. We had strawberry banana dry sift and like stuff that you just normally don't get that tastes like cherries. It was just like, and all the coolest people in this tower mansion with like a hot tub. You know what I'm saying? So, I end up in a hotel room, literally like right next door to Ed Rosenthal. And for some reason, even though this guy's 80 years old, every time I'm fucking with him, I'm higher than I've ever been in my life. And I've been with him a couple 420s, but insane. So his tolerance is crazy, Chloe. We're judging this cup, right? And so it starts early. We're both up early because we're old. <laughs> old people get up early. <laughs> and, uh, we're walking around and everything. And and so we go to breakfast. At breakfast, Ed hands me these little packets. And he says, put this on your food. We are put it in our coffee. So it gets so fucked up. It's one of his little creations. <laughs> from that moment on, the rest of the day, I ended up back and forth from all these different parties. And we were at an after party with these celebrities at the W in Barcelona. We had, we were at the Chirp Tower. We were cannabis all day. I smoked over 50 joints a day. I smoked by 50. 50. That's crazy. 50. We had about now, what, hours. How many hours? We had, and I would say it was probably between 9 a.m. and 3 o'clock in the morning. So. Almost 20 hours or so. 20 hours, okay? And I mean, we were like sober. I was sober at the end. And I couldn't, and so, uh, we set off the alarm at the fucking penthouse. So the first <laughs> some ass Spaniard. And let me tell you something. I have I am Spanish from Spain. And like when I'm pissed, I go crazy. I get it, but I never seen anything like this because these in these, you know, you, you especially in Spain, I mean they're just ordering they're fucking about to kill each other. They're yelling, they're <laughs> I, so the guy shows up, the landlord, and he's like, get the fuck out You guys aren't even smart enough to cover this. But now I have to get called by the police and this. <laughs> and so Ed Rosenthal, I just hear Ed Rosenthal's voice. And he's, Chloe, let's go now, he says. And I was like, okay, I'll say bye. He's like, nope, let's go now. And as we went out that door, I swear to God, I have never seen somebody run that fast. That's eight. And he went down <laughs> how many flights of stairs. And I could have just slid on the rail and I couldn't have kept How did the alarm, alarm go off? Just from the smoke? Yeah, we were blazed out. We had all kinds of people there. I mean, I couldn't even tell you. We had a room full of legends, you know? 
and uh, we were just smoking the best hash and, and everything in all of Europe. So we get downstairs and Bobby Black and April are there and they're like, is this where the party is? And we're like, no, we gotta go, you know? We end up going to all the clubs in Barcelona all night long. We smoked all the way till we came back to the Turk Tower till like three in the morning and total, we have our weed smoked by the end of the day. And we had done all these herbs cannabis I, and I remember walking home with Ed Rosenthal around three o'clock in the morning back to our hotel because it was the same place and I was literally sober with so much weed but I had <laughs> fun that night and it was just the best weed in all of Europe it was an amazing experience and we never had trouble with the cops and eventually the landlord gave in and let us come back it's crazy on on the adventures that cannabis takes us to huh guys so nuts Oh yeah. Now I got another oh, yeah. important question for you guys that I want to know. Uh, how did you guys find out about Happy Monkey? You go first, Mark. I know you found out in Vegas. Yeah, that was. Oh. That would be Vegas. You know what? Let me turn the light on. See, see, here's the problem. It looked just like it did when I came out here this morning. You know, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going full circle. Um, shit, and now my phone battery, let me go find my phone charger. So sorry. <laughs> Chloe, you can start if you want while he figures out his phone situation. So your first experience of the monkey, how did you find out about the brand, the movement, the place, everything? Um, I am trying, so. Okay, I found it. How did I, I, I'm getting there in my head. So, I was in New York, CBE Expo, I was yes. there. Um, was this years ago? That was like three years ago. Three years two, ago. Two, three years ago, yeah. Then I, um, I mean, speak all these different things that come to like a, And somehow I ended up at the Happy Monkey. Who brought me there? I don't remember that, so I'm asking. Somebody brought me there, and it was a long week. I had done so much stuff, and that's where we met. And yes. you, I walked in and you were like, I want to show you this place and I want to know your opinion about this place. And I said, I would tell you. And so you and I went through, we went through the whole spot, the stores, like everything you had going. And it was a good, how long was that tour? That was, you had a lot of amazing shit there. That tour was probably 40 minutes. <laughs> so so what did you think when you first heard about it and you first saw it? was hungry because I hadn't eaten all day. Yes. <laughs> the street, we got to get pizza. Where's the best pizza? So we walked down there, and as we walked, we walked just maybe a block from your store, a block, and I was literally in Times Square. <laughs> there eating my pizza, and you said, I want to know what your opinion is on this. And I said, honestly, dude, you fuck in the United States. I remember that. This location I've never been to in the United States of America. And I still think that that, that spot was just so, you know, that Times Square there. There's so much traffic that passes through there. Uh, thank you. Like I said, you know, that was one of the first times that, you know, we got some positive affirmation and some positive insight from you. And, you know, I started meeting so many amazing people after that. Mark, you look like you're having technical difficulties there, Mark. I just, I just figured it out as best I could to make sure I didn't get booted altogether by losing battery. I've been, believe me, all day so conscious about my phone battery going dead with everything going on. And it went, oh, 5%, I'm like, oh shit. But I'm connected. Just remind me the question. There was a question. Oh, then the question was, um, 
that how, what how how was your first experience at, with with the Happy Monkey brand and the event, and how did you find out about it? I believe the event was MJ BizCon. Yes. And it was Vegas. Yes. And we were at my award show, right? And yes. then afterwards, because Vlad Vlad do the party for the my award show, the after party. Exactly. Exactly. It, but I think, but I think, see, it, it, that trip is all a little bit of a blur. But <laughs> I think, I, 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 I think I met some of the Happy Monkey crew before that somehow. Yes. Yes. Or, yes. or something. I, I, I don't quite remember. But yes, because I, we were then I on the awards and all the and all the after parties. Well, just... and, then, and, and then I wound up talking to an attorney that you guys are friendly with. Yes, jo Remind Joseph Bondi. Joseph. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then ended up at the Cosmo, right? Were we at the Cosmo at some that, point? That was where the after party was, where we held an after party at. Okay. Then, and that's where mm -hmm. I remember smoking mm -hmm. Some big joint, some bunch of dabs, and just man, meeting you guys, and then learning about Happy Monkey. Because I just kept hearing, like, oh, I'm with Happy Monkey. Oh, I'm with Happy Monkey. <laughs> it's, it's Happy Monkey with a U. I, what, what the, what's going on? And, and then everybody was telling me how, you know, you we, we love you guys in New York over here with the Shut the Fuck Up, everything you guys talk about with the cops and everything. We love you guys. And I was just getting it from left and right from a, a, a lot of different people in your crew. And it was very touching, very warming, and certainly ever, an everlasting impression. And, you know, I, 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 while I'm happy to be engaging and, you know, talking like this, I was looking, I'm, I am looking forward to and had been looking forward to the next time I actually see you guys again, which wasn't going to be too too long from now because we were yes. we were booked. Here's one of the fucked up. Well, th there's so many fucked up things about what's going on, but one of the personal things for us, which is it's really a nothing thing at the end of the day, and it's something that I'm really looking forward to in the future, just to further do what me and my brother do and get our message out there. But are you you're familiar with uh, Canacon? Yeah, the, uh, I've heard of it before. Yeah, Expo. Just literally two weeks before, like everything went to shit, we had uh, three contracts to go to Oklahoma, Boston, and Chicago. May, end of May, July, and August, and so. The, we actually just heard the other day they took the May and put it to the end of September. So, but still, it, 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 like they said, we still, but we don't know because when can we gather in groups of eight to 10,000 people? Again? Well, I can tell you right now, um, they officially said, I saw an article, as far as concerts, music concerts, there will be no concerts until 2021 at a minimum. Just so you can start getting an idea. Wow. You know? 20. Yeah. So that, well, well, so, but th that's a large, did, did, was there any kind of range in there? Did you no, see no, any no. Kind they, of they just said music concerts, you know? And, you know, so that oh, just like, gives you an idea, you know? Eight, ten right, thousand. Right. Yeah, that's where it starts getting, you know? That's what. So right. That's what right. But um, who knows? Now, I know you guys are both, you know what I mean, icons in the industry and uh, both legends in your own right. But you have to remember, you know, Happy Monkey is the heart of New York City cannabis. So, unfortunately, a lot of people in the East Coast and the Tri-State area, they don't know about the amazing things you guys do. So I want to start with you, Chloe, so you could elaborate a little bit so the Happy Monkey family can know a little bit about what the Cannabis Business Award is about and what Overleaf University is about so they can understand what role you guys play in this amazing industry. Uh, the Cannabis Business Award, it acknowledges and honors um, business and pioneers for esteemed accolades. 
Mark, you keep on messing up the live when you start messing around with the with the phone. Oh shit. Here right, me. <laughs> All right, Chloe. For um, historic progression and innovation. And so that's what the Cannabis Business Awards is. And it is um, truly, it's such an amazing experience. It brings so many people together. And if you could put a bunch of people in one room and go, that's the room I wanna be in, that's what the Cannabis Business Awards is. It has just such an amazing vibe to it and it honors people for hard work and what they do. And you know, I know people can say things like it's a popularity contest or it's this or that, but you know what? Life is also about getting out there. You know, it's about doing those type, making moves like that. So it's very, I mean, I love it. It's people's choice. And uh, you know, we're going, this is our ninth year. So we're almost at a decade for the Cannabis Business Awards. Started the first year of legalization after we passed, um, you know, before our college. December 2012, you know, cannabis business. So it was, it was really awesome. We started with the first legal state and legal system, and we've just gone from there. And by the way, guys, the first people to night Happy Monkey with our first award were the Cannabis Business Awards and acknowledging us in the industry as mainstream, you know? So it, it's important, I believe, because just like I want to do with you guys here, it's important to give people their flowers while they're here and while they're alive and while they're in their prime more than, you know, in a lot of other industries, you see that people wait till after something bad happens or after the person is not, you know, relevant anymore to give them their flowers. You know, it's important to give people their accolades while they're in the middle of their success and, you know, making a change in this industry. So I think it's amazing what you're doing. Bro. Oh, thank you. Thank you, and congratulations for that. That was a great night. On the boat, underneath the stack of property in the Hudson River, yes. we gave away five honorary awards in New York, and the Happy Monkey was one of them. And I think what you guys did there and are still doing is just, I mean, since the moment you, you really stepped out into the, you know, of, of your industry there, because it's just, it's been in the shadows. I can't believe it's only been three years. It feels like roller coaster so long because I met so many amazing people like you guys, and you know, so many amazing relationships have been built. You know, and I feel like you know we've given you know New York City a voice through us as far as like the rest of the country and the rest of the world. You know, as far as the culture. You know. Yeah, and New York has such a unique culture. And every time I go there, I enjoy it so much. And like the Happy Bunk is my favorite spot. I mean, it just it really. It is, it's, it's the vibe. It's where we're at right now. It's these late night with Vlad. It's the thing, you know, that you created that that will live on and it is part of the culture. And it's, you know, I think that's what makes up cannabis is us. A thousand percent. I, I always say your vibe attracts your tribe. And that's why we have yeah. the most amazing industry in the world. It's because of the tribe you know, that we have and, uh, and, and you know, the energy that we all put together and we push on to the universe. I Mark. Mean, my own bangs. And I still came on for you. For you. <laughs> yeah. Mark, you need to tell the people about the amazing things that you and your brothers do. Because like I said, I know you guys are legends and icons, but you know, we're just starting to educate and inform people here in the East Coast and the Tri-State area about the amazing things that are going on in the industry. They don't all know what's going on. So tell them a little bit about Pop Brothers at Law and what you guys do for the people in the industry, Mark. All right, so typically it's Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law, and it's me and my older brother, Craig. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that I do like to clarify, because we get it a lot, actually, because a lot of people just know us from our videos and and the viral videos we had shut the fuck up and we are really brothers we're not actors or anything we're, we're really brothers we really both smoke pot and we're both really attorneys we're the pot brothers at law and about five years ago we because of my nephew my brother's son shout out to jay cures of west coast cure he insisted that we make an Instagram page because and teach and help other people the way we taught and helped him. When he was younger back in the day, 
he wanted to cultivate. We're in California. I'm a criminal defense attorney. My brother's a business attorney. There were certain very easy, not even, you can't even call them regulations, just laws and statutes that existed back, uh, you know, going back to like 2008 that made it so very simple to operate as a not-for-profit, but as a way more or less to defend yourself from felonies and crimes because people who were still running legitimate businesses under the guidelines then were getting arrested left and right. And if you didn't do it properly, you're going to jail. And so he got arrested left and he got arrested right on two different occasions over like a 10 year period we're talking about. And because he instituted the things that we are now teaching people not only with how to run your business and, and how to do that, but most importantly, how to deal with law enforcement. Because even to this day, it, if you're in the cannabis industry, even though you're deemed an essential business, and we talk about that freaking hypocrisy, if you even though you're deemed an essential business, you get pulled over by the cops. Boy, you better have your pay. You better you better have everything you're supposed to have. I mean, you know, if you're if you're running a legitimate business, if you're in the black market, well, you're just you're fucked. Period. You know, now now your only defense now, and this becomes the most one of the most important parts of what we teach and preach about is the, the being able to utilize the defense that your rights were violated, that they found that. 15 pounds in your trunk because they did an illegal search. They did an unlawful search. And so what we now have become famous, infamous, I don't know what you want to call it, but when the cops ask questions, you shut the fuck up. Hashtag STFU. And it's something known as the script, which is the only 25 words you say when the cops pull you over. And it's very quickly, it's, why did you pull me over? I'm not discussing my day. Am I being detained or am I free to go? I invoke the fifth and then you shut the fuck up when they continue to ask questions and let them detain and arrest you. Now, I will say this, you can learn a lot more about it. I mean, I won't say that, but you can learn a lot more about it in more details. I could go, I could go on for an hour about each line and each word but you follow, you see our videos, you go check out like our YouTube and all that kind of stuff. That's all there. But one thing that we do have to, that we have done now, the last, now what is it, four weeks or whatever it is, since we've been under stay at home orders, is the script with a twist, yes, which is- a twist. Stay the fuck. Yep. <laughs> because, well, <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of the twist. That's the end part of the twist. But here it becomes it becomes this. So, do do either one of you protest to know the script? Can you run it through it with me? I could. Okay. Thank you, Chloe. All right. So I'll be the cop, and I put. So you know what? Let me let me say this while we're doing this. This is great because I don't know if you know what we do this, but we've started doing it. I don't know if we're three or four weeks in. Ever since all this started, every Friday, for what's become known as Shut the Fuck Up Friday. Yeah. Uh, I've been going live at noon Pacific daylight time and doing the script challenge and having people come in and you got to do it right in order, all the words. And if you miss, mess up, bah, you're out. I'm like the Simon Cowell of the, you know, of the script challenge. I'm really mean. If you don't know it, Fuck you it. don't know it. And you just like, you, the son came in and he's like, I'm going to, and you're like, oh, I heard about you and then he like messed up the script and I saw you can his ass in like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so no, so no mercy there. So, so I, but I don't control the board right now. So here we go. Okay. So it's the script challenge and uh, go, we'll go with Chloe. All right. So what do you say when the cops first pull you over? Why did you pull me over? And they start asking you questions. Like, what's that smell? I'm not discussing my day. But today they ask you, there's a stay at home order. Why are you out? 
I don't. I'm Why are you something at? deemed essential? Yeah, because thank I'm, you. Yeah, I'm. Deemed, and that's. I'm going to the store. And that's the only thing you're allowed to say there. Then he says, "Yeah, but looks like you're going to get heroin and cocaine. So, what's what's with that? Where are you going? You going to get heroin and cocaine?" <laughs> I'm not discussing my day. Uh, okay, but I know there's a drug deal going on. You tell me where the drop is, and, <laughs> and then you'll go easy, I'll go easy on you. You tell me where the drop is. I'm not do getting a drop, and I'm not discussing my day. See, so, okay, so, no. So, I'm going to, technically, I could buzz you out, but what you're doing is in no way inappropriate or wrong so I wouldn't want to send the, the, the message so that being said I'm gonna I'm the cop and so okay so you don't want to tell me that well just you know tell me where you're tell me tell me how much you know how much are you trying to get am I free to go there it is you're <laughs> being detained all right then let's do this <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so right there, um, I would not buzz you out just because it's we're raw and uncut, right? Yes. <laughs> so, yes. I, but uh, we have to we have to finish. I know we have to get back to serious mode, and so let's finish it because we didn't finish the script. And so you're still in. Uh, you've been detained. And I want to know where the drop is going to be. I want to know how much you're charging the Johns. What's the deal? Am I detained or am I free to go? You are detained. I, I, I would like to invoke my fifth right. There you go. That's the right answer, right, Mark? Oh, so so, so you're invoking your fifth. You're one of those. You know your rights, do ya? Well, it's gonna be much worse. It's gonna be much, much worse. You can invoke your rights. That's that's fine. But I, I, I won't arrest you if you just tell me where the drop's gonna be and who you're gonna meet. I choose to shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's the only <laughs> correct answer. <laughs> so, so. So now, now I will say this. So what I do now, and what I've been doing, and I've been doing it for years now, with that, with the script, is what I call the daily script review. And you can see it on I was gonna tell you, before you finish, you gotta give everybody here in the East Coast and the Shaisa area a tip of the day, 420 tip of the day. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> I can I can actually I could do you one better if you give me I don't know I do uh, about two minutes and four thirty to forty seconds. Shoot, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, now now hold on. This is, I see. Okay, I put myself on the spot, I guess. <clears throat> but hold on, let me just grab some water because for some reason I have cotton mouth. It's just. Well, you've been it's smoking like a, you took like fifty dabs since you've been on the show with us. Aside from the hundred you took before, last thing too. I mean, he's <laughs> got like the Godfather pipe over there. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't keep track. I just Listen, I, 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 I want to tell you guys both in public here on record. You know, I really respect what both of you guys do. I was gonna tell you, Mark that before I even met you and I realized what an amazing person you are, aside from all your accolades, just the fact that you were giving out this information for free online told me that, wait, that you, you know, I believe intention is everything and character's destiny. So that told me a lot about the type of person you are when you're giving out this information and avoiding people from having to go through these things. And then Chloe, since the day I met you, you know what I mean, you've been so supportive. You know, you, you're one of the realest people I know in this industry. And before anybody knew who we were, you were already like, you know, so supportive. So like I said, I like to give 
my people that flowers while they're here thank you guys for everything you do for the culture for the community and for the industry you know oh thank you man it's an honor thank you very much absolutely appreciate the platform you're giving us yeah yeah yeah, yeah man because it's like i said you know what i mean like before i got into the industry i didn't know about so many amazing people like you that existed and i know there's so many people here in new york and the tries in the east coast that that don't so it's like i learned so much and i made these amazing relationships i want everybody else over here to learn about what's going on so they can see that they have the equal opportunity to get involved to know what's going on and that everybody has the opportunity to be a part of this amazing industry you know yeah so mark you're gonna give us a tip of the day or not mark so you asked me for the tip of the day i'm gonna roll it up into uh what is uh, uh you may have seen it you may have heard it it's a little slam poem that encompasses all of these rights and those 25 words. So, and it's called, am I being detained or am I free to go? I've been fortunate enough to do this on stage, uh, just across the country, all over the place at events, expos and stuff like that. And uh, I'm happy to give it to you raw, as raw as I can do it, I guess. Yeah. It's been, it's been uh, it, it's uh, all right. So it's, am I being detained or am I free to go by the pop brothers at law? Okay, let's go. Am I being detained or am I free to go? This is what to say. My lawyer tells me so. The cops are out there doing a job. Sometimes they must contain a mob, a thankless job that saves many lives at their home are worried children, husbands and wives. But does that give them the right to stomp on my rights? So we are here for you, the cannabis community, to fight, to let you know it's okay to just shut the fuck up when cops ask questions. You start with, I'm not discussing my day, end with, I invoke the fifth. These ain't suggestions. These are words to live by, to memorize. See, it's not about the size of that cop's gun, because they want you to run, so they can pull that macho gun and shoot at you for fleeing the scene. Some cops are just mean. We must shut it off, shut it down, those feelings of anger that instantly come around that cop has to show his power and his might without cause, without reason, and we know they're not right. We must remain calm, keep the devil sleeping on the left shoulder. We must be cold, even colder. Ice must flow through your veins to shut that heat. The blood that rushed your brain straight from your feet when that cop disrespected you, cuz... I love it. <laughs> you want to tell him what that smell was? And he accuses you of a pot DUI because he absolutely knows that's your buzz but see they can't tell and they don't know only if you tell them so oh officer i spoke a joint a few hours ago oh officer here's my medical rec officer i'm a marijuana patient we live in america prohibition still exists that cop is gonna do whatever he's gonna do 50 50 he arrests you Give us a chance to represent you with a defense that's blazing. Let us show you in court we're amazing, but we can only do that if you listen to our tips. Now let me see you move your lips. You know the drill. When the cops ask questions, we say, I'm not discussing my day. Am I being detained or am I free to go? I invoke the fifth. And then you, Chloe Van, Vlad, what do you do? Shut, Shut the fuck up. up! It's all about what you say and what you do. We have given you the script. We are telling you what to say. We are telling you what to do. We've put your hands up in protection mode. But should you take a shot to the jaw, we will be here fighting for the cannabis community because we are the Pot Brothers at law. Woo! <laughs> have a standing ovation for that. Ovation, that's like my new favorite song. That's like- uh, You sure you weren't a rapper before you were a lawyer? Uh, right. No, oh, you know- So into him, if, huh? <laughs> if you, if you, you know, if you'll indulge me for a minute, um, there's a little story behind, behind that. Like why, why does that even exist? I, you know, you one might think that, oh, we're doing what we're doing and we came out here and I wrote this thing. And so, but that's not it at all. Well before Pop Brothers at Law existed, I was an attorney, I became an attorney in 1996. And that's when Prop 215 came out in 
California and patients were getting their rights and getting arrested. And so I've been dealing with criminal defense and cannabis patients my entire career and, and since 1996. And so we, Pop Brothers in Law, 2015, we, you know, hit the scene, but we've been telling people to shut the fuck up for 30 years. You know, I mean, that's nothing new. You know? You're not and new so, to this, you're true to this, Mark. Yeah, so, so, so because, because we were, we, ah, shit, I lost my train of thought. Fuck me. Listen, guys, it's time you for, what were you gonna say, Chloe? I was helping him get his train of thought. For 30 years, you've been thinking this, you're fucking old crap. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You, you were right. I was, I was, I was, I was talking about that. We that I've been telling people this for 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 thirty years. And right, and 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 so one of the ways I release frustration is writing. And I've written scripts and songs and poems and just my whole life. It was even when I was a kid. I just I, I, would, I would write and emote on paper and. About 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, because we started Pop Brothers in Law five years ago, about 10 years ago, I, I was going through all these criminal defense cases and I wasn't able to get good deals because my clients were not shutting the fuck up. They were, they were, they just weren't, they weren't listening and this and that. And I wrote this, I wrote this poem and I wrote this poem and I put it on a shelf and then I think maybe about three and a half years ago, um, Tim with Secret Sesh, we were doing the Secret Sesh and he was at our office. We were doing all their legal work and stuff and he was at our office and I go, you know, I found this poem. What do you think? And I did it kind of like this, but he was in our office and he goes, you got to come to the Secret Sesh and do that on stage. I was like, okay, then I'll do that. And then I little did I know I'd get turned in. I'd be getting paid to fly around the fucking country to go stand around and go after, you know, these artists and stuff and singers and go spit out my my little slam poem. So it, but if people remember it, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's, uh, they remember it and, you know, it's like, I really get a kick out of the faces of the people watching who don't know who the fuck I am. <laughs> just some old Jewish white beard, and I can imagine now I'm, you know, with my beard and everything. Cause it's I'm, like it's like I'm I said. I mean, that that's what told me that you know you, you have great intention and you got great character because, like I said, for you to be spreading this word and helping so many people, you know, just it started out of love. You know, you just started online doing it. Whatever happened happened after that, but just the original intention. Yeah people out and give people a fighting chance against the authorities has said a lot to me so guys it's time thank you for very the, much man. for, for the million dollar question i ask everybody that comes on the happy hour and i'm really interested in hearing your answer guys i want to start with you chloe if you had to describe happy monkey the brand the movement the media the place in one word what would it be and why Huh, Chloe? Yeah, I, I have think about it. You gotta think about it, Chloe? But I mean, it's like, God, dude, one word. One word. And then you talk about why you picked that one word. Pick, um, you know, it's, but I like, it's, it's, it would, there was so much culture inside there. It was just so New York, like to me. And I like the little VIP room. With my little space chair and shit, <laughs> but I uh, I don't know. There's something about that place that's just so epic, that so cultured that all over the world come there. And like when you go there, you feel like you're home, and you could just stay there for hours. I mean, we leave at 2 a.m. Like, <laughs> and nobody want to leave. The the center, of everything going on, and it just, I mean. I'm so glad that that I've like been there to experience that because it, it's really not like any other place I've ever been. And like I said, you know, I mean, you've been an inspiration and motivation to us because, like I said, you know, you 
you telling us that we were on the verge of something as far as like culture and the industry, you know, really inspired us to take this full throttle and, you know, and go on the biggest stage as possible. Look now, three years later, you know, known throughout some parts of the, most of the country and some parts of the world, you know? Would have never thought when I first met you that would have been the case. I had an idea. What's that, Chloe? I always know, I know greatness when I see it, Vlad. <laughs> no, definitely. I, I, I could tell that. And you are as real as they come. Like I told you, uh, say it on record here, one of the realest people I've met in this industry, hands down. Yeah, you too, man. And I just love this. I love that we don't fucking smoke it. We've been smoking for Yes. And we're still <laughs> Mark, okay. Mark, you got to put the dab down for a second. You got to get back to us, Mark. So Mark, I'm, I'm paying full. I'm all. I'm all ears. I'm paying full so, attention. So Mark, so same thing I asked Chloe, of what you know about it, the movement, the brand, everything you've heard, everything you experienced in Vegas. If you had to describe the brand and the movement in one word. What would it be and why? Family. Family would be the word. Why? Because when I met all of the people that I will, I will call the Happy Monkey family because everybody was looking out for everybody else. And, you know, I, I certainly understand that, you know, what I do, I, you know, whatever. And I mean, I was very well taken care of and, and my, as it was my brother and everybody that was with us and stuff like that. But I also saw that that's how everybody was taken care of who was invited to the place, you know? And, you know, really seeing the connection that each of you had with other, each other and feeling that with each of the persons I interacted with, I, you know, I felt that same connection. Like, and I instantaneously, I felt like this is, this is more than just a business this is more than somebody spending money to have a nice hotel room and throw a party and have a bunch of, you know, oh, Pop Brothers is at my party and yeah. have that and whatever, you know, I mean, which is, is great, you know, and I do that and like, hey, you know, you want to throw me a few bucks to come to go and stuff or whatever, blah, but, you know, you want to, you want to, I mean, it's just, you just felt that family vibe. You know, and that's family, family, and, and that's the word I use. Uh, and, and you made a very I good point, uh, uh, Mark, that people don't know that the simplest thing that I would have never thought would have taken so far, one simple thought is what you just mentioned, you got Chloe, if, I, if, if I'm mistaken or not. Our whole goal was when we started to treat everybody that we encountered the way that we like to be treated. And it sounds so simple, but it's been so effective all the way up to the way you felt, Mark. No, absolutely. And you could see it and it shows and, it, and that's why you grow, you know, because people are gonna gravitate to that and, and, and stay away from the, you know, and I, and I think, I think, this situation that we're all in you know we're really gonna see who's who's who in the business end of these things who's available because that's the thing i mean granted you can't say everybody because you don't know what jobs people are actually doing and stuff but you know like you know it's not i i don't have time i can't jump on a zoom i can't jump i can't you know, participate in the social gathering of things when I've been involved in all this stuff because, well, shit, I can't get paid to go anywhere because there's no high times, there's no cups, there's no... And it comes back to no what I said earlier, the intentions. Yeah. And you know, and... Everything. They really are, you know. My award show, I watch people try to throw award shows all the time, you guys. But you know what? I never, I never did this because of money. I did it because I really felt people needed the recognition because I saw what they yeah. did on a daily basis. And, and I saw how hard they worked and fought to keep their businesses. And you know what? You build something on attention, 
and it just blossoms. You plant those seeds and it grows. Yeah. Now guys, yeah, I, 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 I've held you here long enough. So what I want to do, I want each of you to do is, I want both of you guys to tell the Happy Monkey family and everybody that tunes into Happy Hour where they can find you and what should they look out for for 2020 as far as you guys and what you have for the future. Start with you, Chloe. Well, you can find me at cloverleafuniversity.chloevalon.com at cannabisbusinessawards.com. So, um, you know, it, and also cannabisbusinessconsulting.com, uh, although I am booked for the next year. So, um, and then that's- Don't hide the man in these streets, ladies and gentlemen. I'm expensive. Essential. <laughs> She's essential, huh, Mark? I am, believe yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I miss you, Chloe. Absolutely. I'm so happy I got to see you here and you, got, you came to hang out with me. Now, Mark, you tell them where to find you. What should they look out for? You and the Pop Brothers at Law 2020. Okay. As I get that last dab in before, before <laughs> we go. Let me finish. All right. First thing I, first thing I got to say is today, 420, 2020, at 420, Eastern time today, our podcast, Cannabis Talk 101, dropped and started uh, running today, the first uh, episode, which we recorded, uh, the four of us, from our individual homes, and our producer was in his home mixing it all together, and it is what that is, but the, the Cannabis Talk 101 podcast has officially launched, and what's very special about that is it's the first Cannabis Talk podcast that is partnered with iHeartMedia. And iHeartMedia is pushing it. And you'll start hearing our promos and you'll start hearing it on other podcasts and commercials and things like that. So like a lot of people are saying, oh, you're not the first part. No, we're the first partner with you. Anybody can put a Cannabis po po Podcast up anywhere on Apple and get 99 cents a download or whatever they do. Uh, but we're partnered with them and it launched today. We've been, we've been working towards this launch for a year. So, and that was all before we even got into the studios in Burbank. Anyways, God, I'm getting, it, it's just- Congratulations, Mark, because, you know, you've put in a lot of work you have, you know, given out a lot of information and helped so many people in, in the community and out. You deserve that and more. Well, and what I really love about what you just said and about how that happened with us is we're going to be, we now have a platform for cannabis, not only cannabis businesses, but the an ancillary businesses that advertise, they don't want to touch because, oh, it's cannabis. It's cannabis. But we've been given a global pl uh, platform to do just that and get this get this message out there. So that launch. So going forward, it's going to be every uh, Tuesday and Thursday. The new segments are going to the new uh, episodes are going to keep rolling out, and we're contracted to do that for a year. To that's all I know is that for a year. I'm going to be tuning in. I'm going to be tuning in. You never know what's going to happen. I hope so. Man. And I can't wait till we're actually back at the iHeart Burbank Studios, in the studios where we started when we were rehearsing and getting to know everything. And I was like, oh shit. Well, first we were like, is this even gonna happen? You know, cause I, we didn't know, you know, but they gave it the green light. So we're, we're, we're moving forward. We're moving forward. So that's Cannabis Talk 101. And then for Pop Brothers at Law, popbrothersatlaw.com. And then our, our big social media is Pop Brothers at Law, but there's an underscore in between every word, P-O-T underscore, brothers underscore at underscore law, Pop Brothers at Law. And then YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pop Brothers at Law. We are just all over social media. I even have us on TikTok now, trying to teach uh, those people. I'm trying to figure out how to do that, but all over social media. And if you do have a question and are in need of representation, 855 Waslaw, because we represent people in California, but we have a network of attorneys around the country 
that we might be able to refer people to. So we help out in that way too. Listen guys, I am humbled and honored. Happy 420, ladies and gentlemen. I gave you guys a special treat today. Two icon cannabis legends in their own right. I want to say thank you guys for taking out the time to come rock with me on 420, man. I really appreciate you guys. Like I said, you know, you both are an inspiration to me. To take out the time and come over here on happy hour and rock with me means a lot to me, man. Thank you guys, man. I know you guys could be anywhere in the world and you're here with me. Well, thank you. No, thank you for having us, for sure. Yes, man. I, I appreciate it. And uh, as I'm struggling to go, they're calling me. I gotta go. I gotta go watch High School Musical. <laughs> no problem. Don't worry about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. You know, check out these two amazing cannabis icons. This is some tough times. You remember out there, you're too blessed to be blessed, and things that get greater later. Vladimir, checking out from Happy Monkey Happy Hour till the next episode. Peace. Love and happiness. Peace. Stay lifted. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Vlad. Thank you.